receive our thanks don't be quiet in your seat this morning this morning is a day uh, foreordained in the fabrics of time uh, God sent down Jesus for a wretch like you and I this convention cannot go on without thanksgiving without thanksgiving we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord oh give him thanks this morning in this place let this room be an arena of thanksgiving for what he's done for what he's doing for what he's about to do Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever you want to render thanksgiving right now render thanksgiving this morning and this convention cannot continue without an arena of thanksgiving this convention cannot start without an arena of thanksgiving we are praying right now PIWC zone that God is about to do something new in your life so thank him so thank him so thank him Oh Jesus, in the name of Jesus Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ you want to pray right now and say Lord through your blood forgive a wretch like me bring yourself to the altar of consecration and ask the Lord repent if you have to and say Lord I'm sorry on a day like today you mean it the blood speaks for you just lift up prayer right now Lord we bring ourselves before you humbly and say Lord we repent of any transgression of any misgiving of any behavior that goes against your plan and your perfection Oh Lord, against your standard, against your way, truth, and life. Lord, we stand and we say, Jesus, we need you right now in this place. He's so cool. It's a prayer, oh God, of repentance for this own. Lord, we bring this whole area before you and say, Lord, we repent of anything that we've done, of anything consciously or subconsciously, knowingly or unknowingly, God. We bring ourselves before you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might, power and might, belongs to
Christ, every power, every ruler, every principality, every wickedness in high place bows. You want to pray right now that every force of darkness that may wage war against you in this convention, we want to bring it under the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, have your way right now. Lift up prayer 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 right now. That every force waging war against the success of this convention, we pray right now. We wage war against it and say, Lord, your blood speaks better things than that of Abel. Your blood speaks better things than that of Abel. We pray right now that Jesus take your faith. Jesus take your place. Jesus take your place. Lord, take your place. Be enthroned. Be enthroned in this place. May every power bow. May every force bow. May every force of wickedness bow. May every form of darkness bow. We're waging war this morning. Aggressively saying, this convention, Jesus, will take place with success, with speed, with honor. Lift up prayer right now. Send your mighty power. Come down now, oh Lord, come down. You want to sing this like you mean it? Send your mighty power. Hey, come down now, oh Lord, of the prayer right now and say Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit show up in your way show up in your, show up in your mind show up in your, show up in your power You may take your seats. My rest is complete as I sit at thy feet. Holy Spirit. It's complete as I sing.
shameful death for sinners like us we come before you on this good Friday that 2,000 years ago you changed the course of mankind forever this morning we soak everything in that blood the sprinkled blood of Calvary that you oh God sitting at the right hand of the Father will take all praise and all power will take all honor and all glory receive it all we soak everything in your hands this prayer to the benediction on sunday jesus may the healing power flow may the spirit power flow in this place we give you glory receive it all we thank you in jesus name and on, and the church said a big and gigantic amen Oh, you can do it better for Jesus. Let's put our hands together. Church, you can do it better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Welcome all again to the 2024 Easter Convention. And we are titling this Easter Convention, The Mystery of the Cross. Hallelujah. Those of you who are joining online, we welcome you in the house of the Lord. And we want you to know that our God that does the spiritual can also do it through the virtual. Amen. This Good Friday, we are taking a trip to Golgotha. It is a two-way trip. We are going there and we are coming back to testify what our Christ has done for us. Amen. So at this time, I want us to shake ourselves. I want us to be able to get into the presence of God as we invite our praise and worship team led by our sister Barbara Otabel and our Deaconess Stacey Watara in worship. Why don't we give them a clap of offering as they come and lead us into a time of praises and worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a good Friday, amen? Can we be all be on our feet? As we just go around and say good morning, happy good Friday, welcome. Talk to someone you've never met before. We have so many different assemblies here today. Please go around. I wanna see people out of their seats. We are joined heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are
Because of him we live, we move, we have our being. Amen. 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 So in that we want to reverence and understand the significance of this day. In Hebrew, I'm um, sorry, in Galatians 3, 13 to 14, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who's hung on a pole. But he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles. That's us. That is our inheritance because he died on the cross. I want to read the 14 again. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So as we sing these songs, these hymn songs that you are well aware of, let's sing them with meaning. Let's sing them with a reassurance. Let's sing them with an understanding that this is our blessing. This is our inheritance. This is what God has redeemed us for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mm. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Jesus and what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus how precious is that blood that makes me
Verses 23 going, and it reads, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Verse 24, Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. And he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. And the verse 25, which I love so much, says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. None of us are worthy. But through Jesus Christ, he has made us worthy. Through Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed. And because our Jesus is seated at the right hand of his Father, we have been given grace the grace of eternal life, the grace of eternal salvation. If we have worshipers and believers in this room, in this sanctuary, if you have found yourself in the presence of the Most High, why don't you just begin to lift up your voice and give Him the glory? If Jesus' death on the cross means anything to you at all, and you are grateful for this grace that we have been given, Oh, allow your voices to transform this room with your worship. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Indeed, death could not hold you down. Indeed, death could not hold you captive. Yes, you were crucified, you were slain, you were beaten, you were whipped. Ah, but Jesus, you died and you rose again, that we might have life and life in abundance. And we do not take that for granted. We glorify you in this place. We lift up our voices unto you. Oh, Lord God, our Jesus, our Master, our King, we say, be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Oh, King of glory. Mama, mama, kataya, nada, la, ba, 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 si, koto, ra, ba, ba, ba. Lima, han, nada, la, ba, si, koto, ra, ba, ba, ba. Receive your worship this morning. Kinda, ra, ba, si, koto, riande. 
For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave.
Slay. 
that is seated at the right hand of his Father. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We thank you for this matchless love. Because of your grace, O oh Lord, we are where we are today. We have life and life in abundance. Sing into our Jesus this morning. Worthy, declare He is worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship You. King of kings. King of kings, Lord of lords, King of kings, Lord of lords, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship for the stand king, King of kings. one we exalt you in this place we honor you and we adore you for all that you are and all that you have been in our lives had it not been for you Lord Jesus where would we be what life would we have but because of your selfless act volunteering yourself to be beaten, to be whipped, to be nailed upon that cross. Jesus, we have a life and life everlasting. And that is something we will never take for granted. We are grateful unto you for your grace that has redeemed us back unto God. May your name forever be praised. And may your glory continue to reign throughout the heavens and the earth. We bless you one more time. And we honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have worship with thanksgiving. Amen. Through his name. Hallelujah. Oh, you can do it better for Jesus. You can do it better for Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world.
Indeed, it is Good Friday. Amen. We want to bless our sisters, our sister Barbara Otabel and our deaconess Stacy Watara for leading us into a time of praises and worship. As we are being led through this service, we are drawing near to the gruesome site where our Savior bled and died for us. And I want us to be open as we are being led by the Spirit to observe this Good Friday. Amen. Amen. We want to also give respect to our ushers and our ushering team. Please, wherever they seat you, let us listen to them as we know that this day is a day for all of us to seat at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, permit me, fathers, if you will, I want us to give a chance for our children to attend the Sunday school this morning. Amen? My son, whose name is Levi, he's also named Kofi, and he was born on Friday. And usually every morning we wake up and we tell him, today is going to be a good day, or we tell him, you better be good today. Amen? But this time around, we told him that today is Good Friday. Amen? So no matter how good he is, or the day that he thinks he's going to experience, today is Good Friday. And we want our children to experience Good Friday at the Sunday school. So please, if you have your children here, let them be ushered to the Sunday school where the teachers will be ready to take care of them. Amen. Amen. We want to take a scripture reading from our sister, Lalani Ngala. And it is going to be from Galatians 3, verse 1 to 14. Our dear sister Lalani, if you are here, please join me at the front as we clap for her. You can do it better for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please turn your Bibles with me to Galatians 3, verse 1 to 14. Galatians 3, 1 to 14, and I read, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you, for the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture on a, of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed in the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your Christian lives in the spirit, why are you trying to, to be, become perfect by your own human effort? Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you will believe in the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed in God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Verse 7. The real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. What's, most in the script, what more, what's more, the scriptures looked forward to, the, to this time when God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So you who put all their faith in Christ, the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God under his curse, for, the, for the, them be right with, under God, for the scriptures say, cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey the commands that are written in, the, in God's book of law. So it is clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. For the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. This way of faith is very, diff is very different from the way of the, of the law, which, which says, it is through obeying the law that a person has life. But Christ is re has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written that in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. 
Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he has promised Abraham, so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Amen. At this time, we are going to receive a song ministration from our mass choir of the North York area. Amen. Amen. Before, we used to have each district come and bring their song and then dance, but I think we've upgraded from that, and now we've just joined together. Amen. So instead of doing that, we are going to see our mass choir led by our deacon Andrew. So please, mass choir, the stage is yours. Let us give them a round of applause as they come to minister to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good and all the time. And especially to who? To you. He's good and he's a faithful God. And we just want to express our gratitude to this one God who is good not just today, but every day. We just want to say thank you to this God. Amen. So sing along with us. It's in the booklet as well. And may it be a blessing unto you. Amen. So before we start, I want you to turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you grateful? Are you grateful? Are you grateful? And if you are, you want to say back, I am grateful. I am grateful. I'm grateful for the cross. I'm grateful for Jesus. We bless God for what he's doing. So the song is actually in Yoruba, uh, which for our Nigerians in the house um, is a very popular um, language. And it says, Eshe. Eshe means thank you. Amen. Without your love, just so 
together as she say thank you Jesus what amazing love unconditional one more time we say
If you can, you want to speak in the language of the Spirit. If you are able to speak in tongues, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I said, pray to God. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Kibori ande kabari anda la bo shaba. Repeat anda la ba bo kibari ande masunda bo kabab. I said thanksgiving offering unto God. You are saying thank you in the language of the spirit. You are saying thank you in the language of the spirit. You are saying thank you. I baru sabende la bo kabari anda la ba bo me shaba kayande le di anda ibri ande le kabab. Masundo mbori anda la ba be raka da la ba ba raka da la ba ba ni ma yanda le baru sanda ba repeti anda le subo kabari ande ha ma yando ri anda libi kadu sabari ande le ba 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 ri anda la ba bo ri ande ha ri ande ha ri ande ha masunda bo kabari anda la ba sube kaya. Yes, Lord. Yes Lord Yes Lord Yes Lord Akadosa Yes Lord All over this place Jesus In every heart listening to us oh God whether in person or on Zoom oh God on YouTube all we are saying is thank you Thank you, 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 Lord, thank you, Lord, for the price you paid. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice. Mashimo kabe yanda ni yando mazi ande li maru ashabe. Yes, yenda la bo kaba. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. We bless God so much for this day. It is really a joy for us to gather here like this. Indeed, it's a good Friday. It is not an ordinary day. It's a day the Lord has made. A day where we have come to praise, exalt, and magnify his name. Not only that, we are here to remember the price he's, he paid. He paid for you and I. Oh, hallelujah. May the God of our Father, Jesus Christ, give you grace and peace. Amen. In this Easter season where all believers all over the world remember the sacrificial death of Christ, which is the very foundation of our faith. You see, the world increasingly will want you to believe that Christ did not die. And even if he died, he did not resurrect. So you hear argument upon argument. You, you hear intellectuals upon intellectuals trying to use human reasoning and human understanding to let you believe that your Jesus did not rise from the grave. But when you read the scriptures as Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 to 20, this is what he says. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that. We are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. Oh, hallelujah. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. 
And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. And you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. He goes on to say in the verse, verse 19, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we have all people the most pitied. I love the 20, but Christ, oh, but Christ, oh, but Christ, has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Hallelujah. So you are not here celebrating a dead person. Yes, today is the day that we, we remember his death. But I want you to come to a place of understanding that the person you have come to worship, the person you have come to praise, the person you have come to adore, he is not in the grave. Oh, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. So the writer of Hebrews challenges us that we should hold on to this faith. We should hold on to this belief. We should hold on with this understanding that Jesus rose from the dead. And it is my prayer that in this gathering, your faith will be strengthened. And for those of us who are yet to believe, those of us who are yet to receive Christ, uh, you will come to a place of understanding that Jesus is alive. See, when we say he's alive, he is not alive spiritually. Physically, he's alive. Oh, hallelujah. So this Easter celebration, the theme God laid on the heart of our dear fathers, as we've heard over and over again, is the mystery of the cross. And in the passage given for, for the theme, one of the passages given for the theme, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 25, the writer gives us an insight into this mystery. So when you read 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 23rd to the 25th verse, I want to read it with you for a moment. This is what the writer says. This foolish plan of God. But let me pick it from 23. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended. And the Gentiles say, it is all nonsense. So we're talking about something that is a mystery. It's something that people struggle to understand. Because the true meaning of the cross is hidden. So when we stand and we preach Christ crucified, for the Jews, it's Utter foolishness. It's a stumbling block, as other versions would say. Why is it a stumbling block? Was well, to the Jew, anybody who dies on the cross, anybody hanged on the cross, is cursed by God. So how can someone who is cursed by God be called a savior? So for them, it's a stumbling block. When we preach the same message, the writer says to the Greeks or to the Gentiles, it is nonsense. It is nonsense. If someone is going to save another individual, the person must wage a war to overcome the other person to be able to rescue them. But here you are telling me, you have been saved by a man who died a criminal's death. See, for the Romans, anyone who died on the cross is a criminal. And Bible says he was crucified between two thieves. As a matter of fact, Isaiah prophesied it. That he was numbered with transgressors, with rebellious people, with thieves. And here you are telling me, the person who died on the cross is your savior. So to the Gentile, to the unbeliever, it's out of foolishness. It's nonsense. Oh, but thanks be to God. To those of us who are being saved. To those of us who have received. Bible says it is the power of God. That is the mystery. That is why the world cannot understand it. That is why the world cannot comprehend it. Because like our father said yesterday, it takes the spirit of God for one to understand spiritual things. So if you want to approach the cross with a carnal mind, you will still be in darkness. Oh, how I pray that in this convention, the meaning of the cross will come alive to you. 
Like Paul said to the church in Galatia, when he heard the message, it was as if the crucifixion of, the, of Christ was vivid to you like you saw it yourself. Oh, may that be your portion this Easter. In the name of Jesus. But beloved, this morning, I want to speak to you on the subtopic. By the cross, the curse is broken. Oh, hallelujah. By the cross. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, by the cross, the curse is broken. Oh, by the cross, the curse is broken. Oh, hallelujah. So permit me to read again where my dear sister and friend Lenani read from. In Galatians chapter 3. This time we take the 13 and the 14 verse. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hanged on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, Curse is everyone who is hung on the tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. See, when we read the NIV, it says, Christ has redeemed us. The NLT, although it's my favorite, does not do justice to this very verse. Because the idea of rescue is to save one from distress or discomfort. But that doesn't bring the true meaning of redemption. Oh, praise the Lord. And see, to redeem an individual is to buy that person back. To redeem an individual is to make a payment, a payment of a ransom. So that is why I prefer the NIV translation of this very verse. That Christ has redeemed you. Oh, praise the Lord. He did not just rescue you from distress. That was not enough. If it was just by distress, then, 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 then the therapist all over the world could have done that. Oh, praise God. But it was not from distress. It was from the curse that has been pronounced upon us. See, when you read the book of Galatians, the apostle Paul uses some of the strongest words in scriptures to challenge the believers not to move away from faith to works. See, these believers were being enticed to go back to the law. He will ask them in verse 3 of, the, cha of the, the chapter we read, Are you foolish? Are you beginning by means of the spirit? And now you are going back to finish by means of the flesh? You see, that is the, 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 the issue with many believers today. See, we came to Christ by the cross. But now we are trying to finish the race of, of this Christian journey by our own works. And, and, and Paul says to the church in Galatia, that is utter foolishness. How can you start by the spirit and end by the flesh? Oh, I pray that the spirit of God, ah, who is upon you, that same spirit will lead you. Because those who are led by the, the spirit of God are the children of God. And in the chapter 6 of the book of Galatians, it says, if we are led by the spirit, then we should be in step with the spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. We are not going to end by flesh. We are going to continue in the spirit. You see, in the beginning, when God created mankind, I'm speaking to you on the topic by the cross, the curse is broken. If you just join us on the YouTube channel, God will bless you for coming. See, in the beginning, God had a wonderful relationship with man. And he, he placed man in the most beautiful places on earth called Eden. God gave man everything. Including his instructions. But unfortunately man could not hold on and obey or conduct his life according to the instructions of God. So when you read Genesis chapter 3, the 14 to the 19 verse, come with me. Today we'll be doing a bit of reading, so please stay with me, don't fall asleep. If your friend is sleeping, just nudge him for me. And tell, tell them don't sleep, don't sleep. Genesis chapter 3, 14 to 19. You see, man here has sinned, 
Man has fallen short of the glory of God. Man could not keep the, 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 the requirements of the law. Man, man, man could not obey the simple instructions God gave man. And, and, and so when God came to the scene and, and, and God was speaking, God will now pronounce curses. See, the first curse that was ever written in scripture was divine. Oh, praise the Lord. Because man failed. And this is what God said. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed. More than all animals, domestic and wild, you will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The 16 verse says, Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy. And in pain you will give birth. And you will desire to control your husband. But he will rule over you. So wives, you understand what is happening here. The 17, he said to man. And to the man, he said. Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree. Whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. The ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle. To scratch a living from it. By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from the dust and to the dust you will return. By that singular act of disobedience, by that singular act of failing to hold on to the instructions of God, God had to come in and pronounce curses. Praise the Lord. And you see, Man, man would try all, all, all that he could to, to, to try and get back to the place of Eden where they, he had fellowship with God, where he had that communion with God, where everything had been given to him. Why do I say that? Because in Genesis chapter 5 verse 29, Bible says a man by name Lamech would give birth and name his son Noah. And he gave a reason why he called his son Noah. This is what he said. He will bring us who? Mankind. Relieve from our work. And the painful labor of farming this ground the Lord has cursed. So right from Adam, when Adam fell, the desire of man has been, I want to go back. Oh, praise the Lord. And I remember the prodigal son, when he sat in the place of distress, in the place of agony, in the place of nothingness, Babu says he came back to his senses and he would say, I will go back to my father's house, for in my father's house there are plenty, even the common slaves, they have enough to eat. That has been the desire of man. Lamech would say, let me call the son of mine Noah. And my prayer is that by his birth, a relief will come. Oh, oh by, by his birth, uh, salvation will come. Oh, by his birth, maybe, maybe God will have kindness on us and bring us back to Eden. But in as much as man tried, man could not find his way back to God. So God himself will step in and will choose a man by name Abraham who became Abraham. And he will say to him, all nations will be blessed through you. A statement Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3 that it was the gospel message God preached to Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, so today the gospel is being preached to you. That the Lord Jesus has come. The seed of Abraham is here. The one whom God promised that through him all nations will be blessed is here. And it is my prayer that in this Easter convention you will receive Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God will choose Abraham. And God will raise a nation out of Abraham. God will give that nation his laws, his commandments. Yet again, man could not. Man could not. Uh, fulfill all the just requirements of the law. The blood of goats, the blood of bulls, uh, could not save man. So when the Holy Spirit came upon the prophet Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 he will write, no wonder he says this. The way to righteousness, I'm paraphrasing here, is, is for you to live by faith. See, the way to be made right with God is no works. So when the Jewish people came to Christ in the book of John and asked him, what works should we do to, 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 to also, to, we want to please God. We want to do something for God. And he would say, you are doing the works of God. We want to do the same. And they would ask, what works? The only work God is requiring of you is to believe. 
That is the way to righteousness, church. Oh, praise the Lord. And I pray that you will find faith in Christ Jesus. But when you come to the book of Galatians chapter 4, the fourth verse says, but when the time, the right time came, oh, today is the right time. If today is the day of salvation, he says, when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us. This time around, the NLT is getting it right. Oh, hallelujah. It is not a rescue, but it's a buyback. <laughs> the son is getting it. It's a buyback. See, those of you who are into mortgages, there's, there's a buyback clause. That, that after a while, you can buy back the mortgage. And, and, and we were mortgaged to the devil by our disobedience. Oh, but the owner came and said, I want to buy you back. Oh, praise the Lord. He was born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. See, remember in the chapter 3, verse 10, we say that, and God sent Christ. Christ came to redeem us from the curse of the law. If Christ is going to redeem us from the curse of the law, he needs to come and be part of the law. Oh, praise the Lord. See, this passage itself tells you about the divinity of Christ. He says God sent him. That means he was there. He did not just appear. He was sent. If I'm going to send my son, my son has to be present by me. He cannot be somewhere else. He cannot, I can't say he doesn't exist, so I'm sending him. I can't send non-existent individual. So if the person has been sent, oh, then he existed before his birth. Oh, but that is not the focus of my message today. He was sent to come to be born of a woman. So when we read the book of Hebrews, he tells us that the children of God are human beings, flesh and blood. So he also has to become a human being. If he's going to rescue me from the curse of the law as a human being, he better become a human being because God cannot die. And, and if he's going to rescue me as a human being, then he needs to also be subjected to the law. The same law that brought curses upon my life. Praise the Lord. So he was, he was sent to come through a woman. And be subject to the law. And by that, he will buy my freedom. And so the curse that held me bound. The curse that put me in prison. That curse has been broken today. And so today I am a free man. I'm no longer a slave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But before we proceed. I've already told you that the NLT got it wrong when he spoke of rescue. So let me give you again what it really means to be redeemed. It says to free from what or to free from distresses, harm or to free from captivity by the payment of a ransom. A ransom. The payment of a ransom. That ransom was not goat. That ransom was not sheep. And I love it when Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 that it was not with perishable things that you were saved. You were saved with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That was the ransom he had to pay. His life. He had to put his life down for you and I so that we would be set free. Hallelujah. But the how of the redemption or that buyback is what Galatians talk about. Galatians 3.13. He says that he redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us. So it was not the fact that Christ hung on the tree that he was cursed. Before he went on the cross, he was already carrying my curses. He had my curses on him. He did not carry it on the cross. He had it on his back as he went down the road of Golgotha. And as he was nailed on the tree, ah, he was carrying my curses. No wonder the people were mocking him and were looking down on him. And, and we thought, Isaiah says, in Isaiah 53 verse 4, he says, we thought the punishment upon him was for his own sins. Can I read that for you? Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. That was our mindset. 
That was our thinking. No wonder they would say, oh, he saved many, but he cannot save himself. Oh, he did not come to save himself. He came to save me. They got the first part right, but the second part, they were totally wrong. Because he had done nothing to save himself. He, he, was, not, he, 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 he was not sin, but he became a sin for us. Oh, hallelujah. And by being on the cross and carrying my curse, he broke the curse. That was been pronounced by the law. But let's take time and look at some of the curses that he broke. The first curse Christ broke was the curse of disobedience. The curse of disobedience. In Romans chapter 5 verse 19, the word of God says, It was by the disobedience of one man that many were made sinners. So the day Adam disobeyed God, we all came under the curse of disobedience. All of us. Those who are yet to be born. Those who were born just this morning. Those who were born yesterday. They are under this curse of disobedience. Because Adam sinned. So if Christ is going to come and rescue me, then Christ has to undo that which Adam did. Hallelujah. And, and interestingly, every aspect of his life, the enemy tried to cause him to disobey. The enemy did everything in his power to cause Christ to disobey. You see, when he was born before his birth. The angel said he would save his people from their sins. Now, he, he, he is born and in Matthew 16, after Peter had declared him, you are the son of God. That wonderful statement. And Jesus would begin to tell them, you know, I have to go to Jerusalem. I have to suffer. I'll be beaten. I'll be mocked. I'll be despised. And I will, be, I will die. But I will raise again. Peter will pull him to the side and say, you better stop speaking these things. We are not here for death. See, it, it, it is a rescue mission we are on. It is not a redemptive mission. And so he would tell Peter, get deep behind me, Satan. You don't have the mind of God. You have the mind of man. What was happening? The enemy was trying to cause him to disobey. In, 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 his, in his early days of his ministry, in the desert, the devil would show up again. And say, if you be the son of God. You know, this is too easy thing for you to do. You, you just turn these stones into bread and you'll be okay. He said, it is written. It's okay. Let's go to the part of the scripture. It is also written that when you throw yourself from this, oh, the angels will come and rescue you. It is in your own Bible. What was happening? He was being forced. Called, what we call peer pressure proper. From within and without. Even himself. In the garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember his prayer? Oh God, if be thy will. Let this cup. What was happening? There was that inner agony. To turn away from the cross. Oh, but thanks be to God. My Jesus obeyed. Hence the writer says. By the obedience of the one man. The many will be made righteous. Oh, praise the Lord. And so now I don't need to fulfill all the requirements of the law. I don't want to perform rituals or anything. All I got to do is to put my faith in what Christ has done for me. And Bible says I am right with God. The curse of disobedience has been taken away. But with disobedience also came sin. Came sin. Sin entered our world. And so... In 2 Corinthians 5.21, Bible will say, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. He had no sin. But for my sake, for your sake, he became sin. See, to become is to move from one state to another. Oh, hallelujah. He became a man. Meaning he was not a man. He was God. He is still God. But for my sake, for your sake, he had to become. He had to move into the realm of man. When he came into the realm of man, Bible says he was without sin. He was faultless. But for your sake and for my sake, God had to make him the sin offering. If you read the Old Testament, when, when they are going to do the atonement, when they bring the animal, the high priest will put his hand on the animal and proclaim and declare all the sins of the nation upon that animal. And that animal is killed. He became that sacrificial lamb. 
on whom God will take all my sins. I don't know about you. For you, you look good. You look nice. So I don't think you've sinned before. But I know the sins I committed. Ah, so on him, he took all my sins and placed it on Christ. And he became the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world for my sake. The curse of sin was broken. So when we read Psalm 103 verse 12, the writer says, As far as the east is from the west, so the Lord has removed my... Can I put my transgression... I want to personalize it. So the Lord has removed my transgressions. So by that singular act on the cross, my sins was taken away. So turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, I am a saint. I am a saint. I am not a sinner. I am a saint. See, so church, please stop looking down. I said it here last week that this idea of the flesh is weak, the flesh is weak, has to end and I pray it ends. You were a saint. You were a saint, not a sinner. No, 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 no. I said it somewhere. Somebody got, got, got angry with me. And, and I want to repeat it again. See, believers don't sin. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. Praise the Lord. Take the pig. Shower the pig. Dress the pig up. Okay? Dress the pig up. Buy, 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 buy the most expensive sort of clothes for the pig. Put a Louis Vuitton on the feet and let the pig loose. You will know where he will go. But take the cat. Even if mistakenly he puts his paws in something that is dirty, immediately pulls it back and lets it clean. What is happening? When you come to Christ, your nature is changed. Your nature is transformed. Sin is distasteful to you. So when it happens, you quickly jump out of it and say, God, I'm sorry. Oh, but the unbeliever, ah, forgive me, will go again and again and again. No, the Bible says that we don't make a habit of sinning if we have the spirit of God living in us. So if a child of God, if you claim, can I use the word, if you claim to be a child of God and you are still living in sin, check yourself. The nature has not changed. Oh, but I am praying to my God that in this Easter convention, by the power of the cross, there will be a transformation in the mighty name of Jesus. You will no longer live like a sinner for God has purchased you and he's broken the curse of sin. Hallelujah. But with sin also came death. With sin came death. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. Praise God. You see, if man sins, Bible says man has to die. That is the law. So in some part of U.S., people still die by the death penalty. You have sinned. You have to die. So if God has taken my sins and placed it on Christ... And has made him a sin offering. He has to die. He cannot continue walking around. He has to die. It is the law. The wages of sin is death. But he has not sinned. I have sinned. And my sins have, take, have been removed. And he say, oh God, you take it and go and die for him. Oh, praise God. But you see, the enemy thought he was doing that. So that the one who has come to save me would die and I'll still be in the grave. I'll still be in bondage. Oh, but sorry, uh, God, uh, uh, sorry, devil, you are too foolish to understand the wisdom of God. He didn't know that was the plan of God for my life. But by Christ dying, the power of death over my life is broken. That curse that held me bound is broken, setting me free. So in 2 Corinthians 5.15, he says, Christ died for all. Christ, he died for who? All. That those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and was raised. So Paul says, I, 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 the life I live is no longer I. But Christ who lives in me. What has happened? Because when Christ died, he also died. His life is gone. 
And when Christ resurrected, guess what? I resurrected with him. And the life I have is not my life. Because my life is gone. It's the life of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So when you read the Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, it says, Christ suffered death so that by the grace of God, he must taste death for everyone. Everyone. So I don't have to taste death. He has done it for me. Oh, praise the Lord. Come with me to the same Hebrews chapter 2. This time we read 14 and 16. Hebrews 2, 14 and 16. And because God's children are human beings, made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human could he die. So it is only human beings who die. Spirits don't die. The last I check, God is alive. He lives forever. And only by dying could he, listen to this, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil. Who had the power of death? So who had the power of death? It's the devil. And that power of death was over me. And by dying, he took hold of that power and broke it. That was the curse that was upon my life. And Bible says, only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. So there was a fear of dying. See, when, when you say people are going to die, they, they, began, they begin to you know, look at you some way. No, 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 I don't want to die. No, 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 I don't want to die. Yeah, I agree, don't want to die. Oh, but the power of the fear of dying is broken. I'm no longer a slave. So Paul says, for me to live is Christ. See, if I die, I go home. If I don't die, I have an opportunity to do good work in this life. And so it is not, is it? I am torn between the two. I'm like, seriously, you are torn between dying and living? Who talks like that? That is the understanding the man had. That death has no power over him. Oh, if I die, I go be with my maker. If I die, I go be with my Lord. I go into glory. But if God says you should live, it's an opportunity for me to do good, do good ministry in this world. Oh, the power of the fear of dying is broken. And if you are here and sitting under the curse of death, at the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of death is broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when man sinned, man felt ashamed. I began by telling you that God created man and put him in the most beautiful place on earth, Eden. And man had a wonderful relationship with his wife. He, that relationship was so pure, nice, harmonious. That is the dream of every wife, every woman. Bible says in Genesis 2.25 that Adam and his Eve, and his Eve, the wife, were both naked and they felt no shame. Why were they no shameful? Because the glory of God envelops them. The glory of God was what was covering them. The glory of God was what had overshadowed them. So when they see each other, they see the glory. And so they felt no shame, although they were naked. But the day sin entered into their world, and God will come down to seek for man as usual. Adam would tell God, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. How did he know he was naked? How, how, how did he know he was naked? Because they realized the glory that was upon them had disappeared. The glory was not there anymore. So the guilt of shame was now staring them in the face. And as, as I was thinking through, thank God for the Holy Spirit, he gave me this thought. See, when you dress beautifully and you are, you, you are going out, you, you, in your mind, you are looking sharp. Like you go like that. Then somebody will meet you and tell you, oh, sir, there is a stain in your shirt. That ruins your day. You do everything to cover up. That was the re realization of man. Immediately they came to their senses that the glory is not there. Our garment is stained. And so man will now begin to cover his shame. And so Bible says they will find leaves to, to, to sow and to make cloth for themselves. To cover their shame. Oh, but I am 
grateful to God that on the cross he bore my shame. See, sometimes when we watch these movies and pictures, you see that he has a little garment around him. That is a lie. Come with me to the book of John 19, 23. You see what they did to your, your, your God. All because of you. All because of me. John 19, 23. Are you there? I want to wait on you. I don't want to rush you. It reads, When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. What did they do? They took off his clothes, meaning everything was taken off. And, and, and they began sharing. They cut this part for, let me use somebody, my sister here, Jennifer. They have this part for uh, uh, Denzel. They have this part for Philip. And they have the other part for TJ. Four. But it was left with the undergarment. And scripture says the undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So in his undergarment, when he wore his undergarment, it covered him from here all the way to the shoulder. One piece. So there was no way when they took it off, something would be left again. He was totally naked on the cross. No wonder the woman stood afar because they could not look at their, their rabbi with that nakedness. They stood afar. It was because of your shame. It was because of the shame of my guilt. The son of God had to be stripped naked and hung on a tree. But he did that for you. He did that for me. So that we will receive his glory. Oh, hallelujah. By, by, by that singular act, now he gives me the glory of God. I am clothed with glory. So, see, sometimes the enemy, see, he says such a liar. Eh? He comes to tell you, oh, you remember you committed abortion. What is he trying to do? He's bringing the guilt of shame back to you. And so now you become shameful and don't want to come into the presence of God. If that is your story, I am here to announce to you on the cross, ah, that curse of shame is broken. You are no longer a shameful person. You carry the glory of God. The glory of God. No wonder we say Christ in you is the hope of glory. You have received God's glory. Hallelujah. So don't let anybody deceive you about what happened yesterday. Yesterday is gone. It is gone by his death. Praise the Lord. He says in Hebrews 12 verse 2, he, 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 he did not scorn the shame of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. You see, with everything also came the curse of sickness. The curse of sickness. Afflicted man. So when we read Isaiah 53 verse 4, the writer says, he used the word pain and suffering. And that, 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 those words represent the sicknesses of man. See, when sickness comes upon a man, it brings pain. It brings suffering. It, it, it brings such a burden on mankind. And Bible says, on the cross, he took my pain and my suffering. That is everything. Oh, praise the Lord. So, when, when, when Matthew saw Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 performing all these miracles... See, Matthew is a Jew, and he understood Isaiah very well. And he says that when, when, when Jesus came to the house of Peter, his mother-in-law was sick, and, and he would lay hands on the woman. So let me use my home. Uh, my home, Christ came to my home. And when he came, there was a sick person in my home. Laid his hands on the sick person. Bible says the fever left immediately. Ah, the whole of Brampton heard that there's a man in his house. Who can heal sick? The whole city, the whole village, they came with the sick, with the lame, demon possessed. Nobody went back with their sickness. Then Matthew remembered. It is written concerning him in Isaiah. He said, and this fulfills the scripture. He took upon himself our infirmities and bore our diseases. Matthew remembered. That was what Isaiah was preaching. Oh, praise the Lord. See, on the cross, your sickness, the curse of sickness was nailed. So Paul will quote it, but I like Peter. In First Peter, he says, by his wounds, by his wounds, I am healed. 
See, the, 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 his, the, the wounds that he sustained, the bleeding that he sustained was not for himself, it's for me. That whatever sickness that will come upon me, he has taken care of it. Oh, hallelujah. But as I wrap up, there's a curse that unfortunately, as Paul was telling the Galatian church, some believers are trying to bring themselves under again. The curse of the elemental spiritual forces. Galatians chapter 4 verse 3. And this is what Paul says. And that is the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. So before Christ, man was under the influence of the enemy. Man was under the influence of the spiritual element of this world. But when Christ came, he broke the power of the enemy. And unfortunately, many believers today are trying to go back and enslave themselves. Many children of God are trying to go back. I don't know, I don't know why. That's why he said you are starting with the spirit and ending with the flesh. You are going back into fleshly things for the enemy to enslave you. See, some writers have tried to explain this away and saying that the elemental spiritual forces is just rules and regulations. But I bet you differ. I respect them. They are theologians. They have the PPHDs. But I respect them. But when you read the same scripture in the verse 8, he says, before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to the so-called gods that do not even exist. So I, I, I am very sure that when he said we were enslaved by the elemental principles, he was not talking about rules and regulations. He was talking about the powers of darkness of this world. That held us bound. Oh, and I pray that he who triumphed on the cross will break every power of darkness upon your life. He who triumphed on the cross will break every demonic influence upon your life. Because before Christ, that was our state. Oh, but now, he has redeemed us. He has saved us. Oh, hallelujah. We are no longer slaves. We are now children of God. We, 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 are, we are no longer subjected to the rules and the regulations of the devil. Ah, but we have now become the righteousness of God. We can now call God Abba Father. Beloved, you are no longer of the world. You are now a child of God. And there is therefore the need for you to live your life as people who have been redeemed by Jesus. We do not live our lives by works of the law, but by faith in Christ. His redemption has brought us freedom. His redemption has brought us justification. His redemption has brought us sanctification and has made us righteous with God. It is through Jesus Christ that God has blessed us now with the same blessings he promised Abraham. Church, this Easter, it is my prayer that the meaning of Jesus' death will be made clear to you as if you have seen a picture of his death on the cross. It is my prayer that by the power of God, every curse in your life will be broken. Because by the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed you from every elemental spiritual force. By the cross, the curse that was pronounced by the law is broken. Oh, by the cross, the curse of death is broken. Oh, by the cross, even the curse of poverty is broken. Church, this is the mystery of the cross. Ah, we will cling to the old ragged cross and someday we will exchange it for a crown. May the Lord God richly bless you. Amen. If you can, be on your feet with me. So I will cherish the old rock. Oh, till my troll. Alas, I lay down. Hey, I will cling to the old ragged cross. And I change it someday for a crown. Oh, so I'll cherish the old ride. Alas, I will cling, I will cling to the old 
voice and appreciate God for the cross bless the name of Jesus for the cross by the cross the curse is broken by the cross the curse is broken the curse that was pronounced upon you the curse of disobedience is broken by the cross by the cross the curse of sin is broken by the cross by the cross every curse is broken you are lifting up your voice and appreciating God for what he has done for you you are lifting up your voice and appreciating God for all that he has done for you he has purchased your freedom there has been a redemption Lady Barusa bless God bless God bless God for the redemptive work of Jesus bless him for the redemption that you have received bless the Lord bless the Lord for this redemption in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus bless Jesus this old rugged cross has purchased my freedom. This old record cross has made me whole. This old record cross has brought forgiveness. This old record cross has brought healing. This old record cross has made me a righteous person. I'm no longer a sinner. I am a saint. And this morning, my God, I am here to bless you. I am here to honor you. I am here to appreciate you. To say thank you for the cross. Beloved, we want to pray. We want to pray and come against the curse of sin. Bible says by the cross, the curse of sin is broken. Because he became a sin to us. So that we will obtain the righteousness of God. We are praying in the name of Jesus. If anybody in this house online is still living in sin. By the power of the cross. We want to break that curse in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. You know where you are struggling. You know the area you struggle. You are saying to God. I cannot do it on my own. And I am praying by your power. By your power. This curse will be broken. By your power. This curse will be broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The curse of sin. The curse of sin. 
the curse of sin the curse of sin living in sin is an abomination unto God the children of God don't live in sin so I pray in the name of Jesus if there be any individual Lord in this gathering in this sanctuary still under the curse by your power by your power we break that curse 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 in the name of Jesus we break that curse in the name of Jesus we break that curse Masuta boni yanda yekadam ni barusa yende. We are no longer slaves unto sin. We are slaves unto righteousness. We are slaves unto righteousness. In the name of Jesus, ni kadori yende. Marusa be, marusa be. Rakada baba, rembenderiya, rembenderiya. Lupari yanda la babosa. Masinda yende, masinda yende. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. You are praying. Kabori yanda la basube kaya. Ribanda la basubende. Mayonde leha. Masubo kabari yanda la baba. Rembende yande ha. Libra kadosa. Somebody lift up your voice. You are praying. Every curse. Every curse. Every curse. Every curse. Every curse is broken. Every curse is broken. In the name of Jesus. The curse of sin. Living in fornication, living in adultery, living a homosexual life. Uh, that curse is broken by the power of the cross. By the power of the cross. In the name of Jesus. The curse of alcoholism. The curse of alcoholism. Drug addiction is broken. Is broken. Is broken. Is broken. In the name of Jesus. Somebody you are praying. You are praying. Lepekadosa. Rapariyanda la babo. Ripeyanda. Ripeyanda. Every curse. Every curse. It is broken. Every curse. It is broken. In the name of Jesus. Le marusa bo kayande. Masida la baba handa la ba. Kiende. Masubo kayanda la ba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that individual who is living in sin, in the sin of fornication, in the sin of adultery, this day, Lord, by the power of the cross, by the power of the cross, we break the hold, we break the hold, we break the hold, we break the hold. That young man, that young man, I bring him to you, Lord. I bring him to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that young woman, that young woman who is living in prostitution today, Lord, by you the better, by you the better, Rabol Yandaye, that young person living in unbelief, we rescue them, we rescue them. There is deliverance, there is deliverance. Yandaleha, Masubo Kabariha, Rendayende. Today, on the hill, we come to you, Jesus. Ah, Masubo Kadabariande. Makaboria, what can wash away my sins? Oh, nothing. Makaba. Hey, what make me whole?
beloved, when sin entered the world, death also came. And Bible says, by the cross, the one who holds the power of death has been defeated. By the cross, death is broken. We are praying this day. If there be any household where the spirit of death, see, death is a spirit. In the book of Revelation, the greater saw death sitting on a horse. And we are coming against death in the name of Jesus. We are coming against death in the name of Jesus. If there be anyone upon whom the spirit of death is hovering by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we break the power of death. You are lifting up your voice and you are praying. You are praying. You are praying. We break the power of death. Somebody pray. It's a time of traveling. It's a time of traveling. You are crying unto God. Every power of death in your home, in your life, in your surroundings is broken. Is broken in the name of Jesus. Today, today, the hold of death. Hey, Kabei, Marusa, Marusa. Today, on this faithful day, we rescue, we rescue. You sent your word, you sent your word, and you snatched them up from the gate of death. Anyone on any sick bed, anyone at the verge of dying, this day, we declare life. We pronounce life. Let the church pray. Masada Bakado. Rembendeya. 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 Libranda la Masubakado. Mayendeleha. 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 Every power of death. Every power of death. Upon your people. By the cross. By the cross. We break it now. We break it now. Is somebody praying? You are praying with all seriousness. Lay Marusa. Kayende. Kayende. Rapoli and Alababa. In the end, you shall not die. You shall not die. You shall not die. Yandaboha. We reject it. In the name of Jesus. We reject death. In the name of Jesus. Luboy and Abaha. You will live and declare. You will live and declare. Masundeha. The praise of God. Yandaboka Barianda. Masika Darababa. Rembendea. In the name of Jesus. You see, in the book of Colossians, in the second chapter, in the 14th and the 15th verse, this is what Bible says. He canceled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this same way, in this same way, the way of the cross, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. We are praying. If, if, if there be anyone who is demonic possessed, demon possessed, you are under the influence of the devil. A, a Bible says Jesus came to a place where a father will bring his son. And he said to Christ, my son is demon possessed. Sometimes the demon wants to kill him. Put him in water. Put him in fire to end his life. This day we are praying. Any such individual under the influence of demonic attacks, demonic oppressions, we are breaking that in the name of Jesus. We are breaking that in the name of Jesus. We are breaking that in the name of Jesus. By the cross, by the cross, the elemental forces, their powers are broken. By the cross, the power of the enemy, the power of the enemy is broken. We are breaking that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we set you free. We set you free all over this place. We set you free all over this place. We set you free. That demonic forces that wants to end and destroy your life. We break their hold. We break their hold. We break their hold. In the name of Jesus, we break their hold. Masada Makayande. Lay Bariha. You are praying. You are praying. Kasunde Beya. Mayando Yakada. Kedale. Labrandaba. Somebody is praying. There is deliverance in the house. 
There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. He set us free. Hey, Bokayanda Lama, Maru Sayende. There is deliverance in the house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the house. Mayuta Bekamonia. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Kayanda Lama Bo. Luma Sayanda Be. Masubakada. May Kadusa. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointed. Oh, let the power of the Holy Ghost. You are in the house today you know you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost can I be plain you know you don't speak in tongues I encourage you to move forward you know you are in the house you are desiring to speak in tongues I invite you to come forward he says and in this redemption we have received what God promised Abraham the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost you know you are in the house. You don't speak in tongues. But there is a desire. There is a longing. You want to speak in tongues. Today is that day. I encourage you to come forward. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Anointing. The anointing of God is here. Hey, Baruha.
Somebody you are praying. Stretch forth your hand upon them. Stretch forth your hands upon them. And speak in tongues right now. Speak in the name of Jesus. Let the church blast in tongues. My own day. My own day. My own day. Let the church pray. Let the church pray. You are praying. Holy Ghost, come upon them. Come upon them. Now, the Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim.
Masada la Makada. Yes, Lord. You are praying. Church, you are praying. It's not a cue for you to stop. It's not a cue for you to stop. Church, you are praying. You are praying. The Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be in your body. Lay your right hand on where that sickness is right now. The healing of God. The healing of God. The healing of God. The healing of God. Hey, let the sun of righteousness arise. Let the sun of righteousness arise with healing. With healing. Hey, Kaba. Wherever the sickness is, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The sun of righteousness. The sun of righteousness. Wherever the sickness is, lay your hands. There's healing coming to you. The healing of God. The hand of God is touching you. Now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Receive the healing. Receive the healing. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is. Whatever the sickness is. It will not come back again. Today is the last day. You will feel the pain. Today is the last day. 
stomach pain is being taken away now. The stomach pain is being taken away now. It is gone. Never to come back. Never to come back. Leave in the name of Jesus. I flush your body with the blood of Jesus. I flush your body with the blood of Jesus. Your whole system. Every viral infection. Every viral infection. Every bacterial infection. In the name of Jesus. Now you don't know the Lord has done it. He has done it. He has healed you in the name of Jesus. You want to raise your two hands with me? Oh, something new in my life. Something new. See, if you have been, you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, please, I want you to see, go with Elder David right now. Elder David, please, anyone who has received the Holy Ghost baptism, take him, please follow Elder David to the, the, the teen room. Hallelujah. You are thanking God. Yeah. With your two hands lifted, something new. Just the voices. That is. That is your prayer. You sing in that song. Lift up your voice. If you can, lift up your hands. Please do that for me. It is a cry to God. It's a cry to God. Sing it with meaning, with understanding. In Daraba, oh, something new in my life. Oh, if you can obtain a moment of silence. Spirit of the living God. Here we stand in your presence. With our hands lifted up. We are receiving from you. He said, it's an act saying to you, Lord, we cannot help ourselves. It's an act saying to you, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. So as our hands are lifted up, O oh Spirit of God, let there be a release. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Give thanks in the name of Jesus. Give thanks for ministry in the name of Jesus. Father, release it now. Jesus, you said you asked the Father. Now, Lord, now, Lord, the heart that is yearning, 
The heart that is yearning, they are crying, oh Lord, for you. The heart is crying for you now, now, now. You feel this heaviness in your palm. It is the presence of the Holy Ghost. The heaviness in your palm is the presence of the Holy Ghost. Hey, Maru Sayende Kaba Maru Sayanda. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Spirit of God. He said, by the cross, every curse is broken. I stand in your authority this very moment and I break the curse of sickness. The curse of sickness. The curse of sickness. The curse of sickness. I'm using Dylan. I'm using Aina. I'm using Ike. I'm using Sam as point of contact. And I break the curse of sickness. by the cross the curse is broken I stand in your authority Lord under the unction of the Holy Ghost every influence of the devil you said in your name whatever we bind here on earth is bound in heaven whatever we forbid here on earth is forbidden in heaven every influence of the enemy is forbidden today every influence of the enemy is forbidden today in the name of Jesus the curse of poverty you said you became poor that we will be rich. These were your words. It is written in your book. And so we stand upon that authority. Upon that same word. Every curse of poverty. Surrounding your people. Every curse of poverty. Lord upon the house. Every curse of poverty. That has been pronounced. You said every handwritten code. Against our name. Was blotted by your blood. I cancel it in Jesus name. And now may the power of God, that same power that brought Christ from the dead, may that power quicken you. May that power quicken you. May that power quicken you. Be awakened from your slumber, oh sleeper. Be awakened from your slumber, oh sleeper. Be awakened from your slumber, oh sleeper. In the name of Jesus. The one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what we can think or even imagine may that same God bless you in Jesus name Amen oh let's make more noise than that for Jesus if you know that you are free from the curse of sin death, disobedience I want you to shout unto the God of our salvation oh hallelujah the Bible says that the shout of joyful shouting and salvation is in the dwelling of the righteous and that the right hand of the Lord moves valiantly that we will not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. This indeed is a good Friday and we know that our God has spoken to us through our minister, Pastor Philip Chema. Hallelujah. And I pray that you will take this word with you and you will soak in it as we continue on this journey to the Resurrection Sunday. And this time I'm going to invite my dear elder Cornelius Beidou to give us a special announcement. So please let us give a clap of offering as we welcome our dear elder Cornelius Beidou. Amen. Um, with our church, it's customary after we receive, right? We received from the Spirit today, correct? We received from the Spirit today. What was the theme? By the cross? What? Wow, we forgot already. Huh? Da Danielle, I can hear you. What did you say? By the cross, right? By the cross, the curse is broken. And when, when our pastor led us, he talked about a lot of different curses in our life and said, you know, today, the significance of that cross, the reason we're sitting here on a Friday, 
most of us would have been sitting at work this day. Right? But we are here. And we are recognizing the cross. As part of our church, every gathering, we do an offering. Not just the general offering, but we try to do what? A special offering. Why do we call it special? Why do we put emphasis on it? We do so, right? So we know that you're giving above and beyond what you would normally be contributing to the kingdom. Our offering goes to do a lot of things in our church. If you're sitting in this beautiful building, in this beautiful sanctuary, to do all the work that we do takes a lot of money. You know, the government does well, and they take your money from you without you even giving them authority to do so. Right? You have no say. No matter what you do, they take theirs. In the kingdom of God, the ultimate government, the Lord teaches us to give willingly. He doesn't just take it from us. Even after all the things he gives to us, he teaches us to give back into his work. Today we're going to give. Today we're going to give. See, when I came in a little while ago, I got the numbers of the number of people that were here today. And there's 227 adults in here today. It's not great. There's way more than that in our church. But there's only 227 here today. There's a good number online. And I'm going to speak to the online folks in a bit. But from the 227 people in here today, I wanted to test something. See, traditionally, there is a number of people that have been here in Canada for a very long time. Right? Coming in today, I could see our Elder Avenger is here. You know, there's people that I've seen in Canada since I was a little boy. Right? And then there's other people that are new, new faces I haven't seen. A lot of people have come into the country. Some people are looking for places to stay. Some people are having a lot of troubles. I hear from some of our pastors and some of the elders. You know, we're looking for somewhere for this person to stay. We're trying to put this person here. We're giving some money to help. All that stuff comes from the little that we gather. Right? The government doesn't give the church anything. We know that. They're actually trying really hard to stop the Christian movement. And in order for us to be able to advance God's kingdom on this earth, we need what? Funds. We need a lot of funds. So I'm not going to press hard today. We're going to come on Sunday again. I'm just letting you know. And Sunday, as Christ has risen on Sunday, we want your offering to be even what? Greater on Sunday. When you come looking nice, we want you to come prepared. So today, 227 people in here, I will make it very simple. Don't start at my number. Start higher if you can. Okay? I'm going to give each person very simply $100. There are some people I expect a lot more to come from. But I'm going to give you $100. And, you know, I took a verse from Galatians, if we could put it up for me. And as you read it, it says, Galatians 9 Galatians 6, 9 to 10, don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right, if you don't give up. We should help people when we can, especially if they are followers of the Lord. Now, I want you to, I'm going to change a few words in there, okay? This is our church. Don't get tired of helping the church. This is a must. This is something we must do. You will, reward, you will be rewarded when the time is right. We do this every gathering. You know, last year when we gathered, we gave. 
right? It wasn't to where we normally would do it. So when we finished and we looked at what we had, it wasn't there. We cannot repeat that. Easter convention is a critical time in our church. Right? His history, our church, we follow a lot of history. History will show you. Easter convention is when, usually, our members give what? The most. Why? What's the significance of Easter? We already said it. By the cross. So today, let us have faith. Dig deep. $100. That is all we're asking for. We'll get someone to bring the bowl forward. One hundred dollars. All right, and I will start one hundred dollars. Nicholas Hilda, if you can give us a song, please. One hundred dollars. Oh, who's up? Who's up? I went out of order. Who's coming? Ah, Kobe. Here we go. One hundred dollars. Please do well. If it's e-transfer, come up, tap it. All right, um, if we can put the address, email address up for our offering today for e-transfer. I just want you to take your phone. We'll sing, we'll dance. Let's do well. Let's bring it. All right, let's do well and bring it forward today. We want to see, we want to get everybody involved in this today. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, shall we humbly rise on our feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap your hands like this? Put your hands together if the Lord will save you. You want to open your mouth and sound unto the Lord. Yeah. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer all to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. As we offer all to you the sacrifices. We bring sacrifice of praise. We bring sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of grace into the house. We bring sacrifice of grace into the house. Yeah, as we offer up. So it's offering time, please. Offering time. It's not that you sit back and just wait. This is the time. Our, our man of God who stood here said, bring a hundred each. And so you can do more than that. You can, you know, but it's offering time, please. Yeah. So please, let's come around and do the offering as we ought to. God bless you. Amen. My sins are gone far away. Jesus has taken me. My very sins are we. Once I was a sinner, saved by grace. Once I was a sinner. Hey, my sins are gone far away. My very sins are away. Hey, once I was a sinner. Yeah. Hey, my sins are gone. She says, I'm sticking my very sins away. Once I was a sinner. Yeah. I was a sinner. Once I was a sinner. Once I was a sinner. Hey, once I was a sinner. Hey, my sins are gone. Hey, Jesus has taken my very sins away. Once I was a sinner. Hey, once I was a sinner. 
is the faithfulness of friends To me, to me It's unchanging to the end Is he, is he When the certain waters go He is the comfort of my soul He is the faithfulness of friends To me The power of God. Yeah, by the power of God, everybody say, Day by day, day. Come day. Day. Day by the power of God. Say, we are kept by the power of God. Put your hands together, say, Come by the power of God, everybody say, Day by day, come on, day. 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 Hallelujah. Our dear Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you this morning for such a wonderful and a special day. As saints gathered to give praise unto your name, O Lord, and offer unto you, Lord. We pray, God, that may you continue to bless us so we get more to give and expand the cause of your kingdom business. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. What do we say to our brother Kobe and the praises team? God richly bless you, bless you, amen. Amen. Uh, we want to please take a few announcements. Uh, we want to remind ourselves of the work of intercession that we started last night. We have been mandated to bring two individuals each for this Easter convention. So if you have not yet texted your friend, your roommate, or somebody that you're interceding for, you still have time. Hallelujah. 
So we want to remind all of us, we don't want to come by ourselves for the next services. We want to bring people who have yet to see the power and the resurrection of Jesus. So please, as a reminder from last night from our dear Pastor Phil, we want to text them, even right now, take the time to look through your contact list, reach out to that friend, let them know that Jesus is waiting for them this Easter. Amen? Amen. So we still have time, and we want to do this mandate to the glory of God. So remember, two friends are your family. These are the people that God has called us to bring into the flock. Um, an another update, our brother Dylan, who was at Sick Kids yesterday in the hospital, they have finished the surgery. Oh, hallelujah. And we know that the blood of Jesus is being applied on his life even now, but we want to pray for him, and we want to continue to pray for the family that God will sustain and hold his life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Tonight is going to be part two of our Good Friday. Somebody say part two. Part two. So we did part two AM. We're going to do part two PM. Hallelujah. So Good Friday is still going on. We are starting at 8 PM this evening. It is a Holy Ghost baptism service. So please don't come looking pretty. We are going to encounter the Holy Ghost. Amen. So come comfortable, come on time. We have a full schedule. Those who are on program, please do well to be here beforehand so that you can prepare yourself and soak in the atmosphere of our activities. Oh, hallelujah. And this brings us to the close of our Easter convention for Good Friday. I pray that you have all been blessed this morning. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to humbly ask for our dear First Lady, Mrs. Eunice, and then I agree to give us a closing prayer. Or, sorry, our Mrs. Debbie Eggman will ask our Mrs. Eunice Agri to give us a closing prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord so much for how far he's brought us. Please, let's be on our feet as we pray. We give the glory oh. God, we give you all the glory this afternoon for great things, Lord, you have done for us. Lord God, to have sacrificed your life for us who did not deserve it. We are grateful, Lord, that you took our curse upon yourself. That, Lord, because of you, our curse is broken. Lord, you have brought us back. And, Lord, you have redeemed us. You have put your name on us. And you have called us your children. We give you glory, Lord. We give you all the honor that you deserve. We tell of your love to all the nations. For who can love us like this? What manner of love, oh God, that you have lavished unto us. That we who were far, that you have brought us us near that Lord you have washed us that you have clothed us that you have cleansed us that Lord God you have made us brand new we are grateful our hearts are overflowing with joy and Lord we pray that as we leave your presence you will continue to be with us Lord God let this encounter let it continue to overflow in our hearts, Lord. Oh, God, that the great thing that you have started here tonight, even as we go, Lord, we'll continue to receive manifestations of the good things, oh, God, that you are doing in our midst. We thank you, Lord, that you are God, that you will gather us again tonight. And, Lord, once again, we will experience you. Continue to bless your man servant, to whom you blessed us this morning. Lord God, increase your anointing upon his life. We pray, oh, God, that tonight, also your presence will be in our midst that Lord will have every cause to give you all the glory all the honor all the adoration in the much less name of Jesus we have prayed with thanksgiving amen how many believe that they are blessed see just a few people have raised their hands. That means the rest are going home as an old people with your old cases. But but no, we don't we don't want to believe that. I know you are blessed. And I know Jesus is now more meaningful to you than ever. The cross of glory. 
I just want you to lift up your hands with me. Because he has made you so awesome. You are so precious to him that he sacrificed his life to set us free. Heaven is looking down on you with pride. Knowing that ordinary mortal has embraced the cross that now you have become the beauty of heaven. And now unto him who is able to keep and do immensely now bless you. May Jehovah our Father the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ grant you peace. May he elevate you in your spirit by faith as he brings you to a place of his majesty. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace and grace. May you lead victoriously. May the Lord accomplish what he has purpose concerning you. May your life be bright. May your glory be visible. And may your blessing be real. Go in the power of the Spirit. Be released into the greatness of your destiny. And may you sing the praise and the glory of Him who has made you an apple of His eyes now and forever. And let the people say, Amen. God bless. God bless you. Bless.